Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about foreclosed properties. Hi everybody, this is Joe Jurek again, Indiana Joe. Today I'm going to talk about foreclosed properties. What is a foreclosed property? A property that has a mortgage against it in which the buyer does not make payments eventually will get foreclosed upon. A foreclosure can happen to a single family home, a condominium, a townhouse, a multifamily building, or even a big large commercial hotel such as this. Whenever a bank forecloses on it, they take it back and it's called bank owned. So when you hear the word foreclosure, when you hear the word bank owned, when you hear the word REO, that stands for real estate owned, or in some cases banks call them Oreos, other real estate owned, it's all one and the same. So it's not a short sale, it's not a pre-foreclosure, it's a foreclosure, a foreclosed property, bank owned, REO, Oreo, however you want to think about that. Now when you're looking at opportunities with a uh, bank owned property, you can think small like a condominium or a townhome or a single family house. You could think about a multi-unit as well too. But you could also think about a big commercial unit such as this. The one thing I looked at with this particular bank owned property that I like is it, it has multiple uses. It could be a hotel. It could be maybe converted into an apartment uh, complex. It might even be able to be converted into individual condominiums. What do you have to do? You have to check the zoning of the specific city, town, county that the property's in to see what the accepted use might be for the property because that's so important. The more things a property can be used for, the more valuable a property might be. So anytime you see a foreclosed property such as this, number one, you can look for a for sale sign or ask around to see who might own the property. The other thing you could do is go to the uh, county record keeper and wherever the tax bill is going, say the tax collector, look to see who's actually paying the tax bill on a property such as this. Once you find out who's paying the tax bill, that's usually the owner, and then I would go about contacting the owner and asking them if they're interested in selling the property and finding more about it and how much they're looking to get for it. And here's the great thing when it comes to commercial properties like this. Nobody wants these to sit around on a busy major street. They're not getting tax dollars. It's an eyesore to the business community. And a lot of times they're almost eager to help you, whether it be the bank that might own the property or the city or town that it's in because once it's open and running again it just helps you know the tax base it helps the community it makes the city look a little bit better other businesses around are a lot happier too so anytime you see an opportunity don't limit yourself to only think about one thing or small things okay I'm looking for bank owned properties or I'm looking for foreclosures I got to just look at homes no it could be everything and anything as long as you have a buyer that's looking for the type of property you find you might have a deal right in your back pocket so if I built my buyers list and I had a buyer that was looking for maybe a big large multi-family or they were looking to do a condo conversion of apartments into condos or they were looking at a big parcel of land to maybe do some other type of redevelopment this this is exactly what I'd be looking for. So the more buyers you have, the more things that they're looking for, the more deals you could find. And the great thing about this, once you do one deal with the bank that might own this property, there may be more deals to follow. Because the great thing is, if you make the first deal easy and make it kind of problem free for the bank, they may come to you with other deals that they have of other foreclosed properties. So it's all about establishing that relationship. So most importantly, when you find a bank owned property or foreclosure, you got to know what you're going to do with it if you get it at the price you want. If you have buyers, you'll know what they want, where they want, and how much they're willing to spend. So what you need to do is get out there and fill your lead bucket with leads of foreclosed properties, network with small local banks, small local credit unions, find the properties, find the deal, bring the two together and you'll make money. The great thing about this property too that I just see, it's on a major street, it's near a lot of businesses, it's near a lot of uh, you know, employment opportunities, there's a couple community colleges down the road, huge major employers down the road, it's right on a lake, I don't know if you can see the lake a little bit in the distance, it's right on a little recreational type of lake, so there's so many positive attributes here. And the funny thing is about today's market with bank owned REOs, they're almost selling for pennies on the dollar. The great thing is you could probably buy this property for a lot cheaper than in some cases the materials even to build it. I've traveled the country and I see bank owned REOs selling for $20, $30 a square foot. 
to build that property could be well over $100, $150. So when you're out there looking for opportunities, keep your eyes open, keep your mind open, build your buyer's list, and the next time you see a bank-owned property, you might be able to be that much closer to your next deal. Well, until next time, I'll see you later. Take care. Good luck. Bye-bye. Believe and achieve.